excuse my English, excuse my eyes if they look tired. Um, I'm going to try and give you the message of parents around the world, not just in the United States. I suppose many of you are parents, if not, maybe your uncles or aunts or you know, have young cousins or neighbors. You know kids, not necessarily teenagers already on social media, but kids who are starting to use devices for the first time or asking questions for the first time about technology. Um, how many superheroes do you know? Because I'm sure you know plenty of them. When I think of superhero, I think of a train going very fast towards a girl, a little girl, um, an innocent little girl, and there's the superhero saying, oh my god, the girl's in danger. Wait, let's think, have I ever stopped a train? Will I be um, strong enough to stop the train? Uh, what will happen if I don't stop the train? Will the girl die? Uh, what, what, what should I do? Should I call someone to support me and we can do it together? Well, if the superhero thinks about all those things, he's losing time, he's wasting time, the girl is lost. A superhero does not think that long about his capacity or her capacity to do what he's or she's supposed to do. We've been talking this morning a lot about um, what it means to be a parent in the digital times. And uh, Liz and, and Michelle and some of the experts in the panel talked about what is expected from parents, what parents should do so we can be better in aiding our kids to become digital citizens. But this is so difficult. It's all about expectations and the noise around us does not let us think for a minute of what we really want to do and how we can do this. Because it's not just about tech. It's about how you feed your kids, how you raise them to be polite, how they dress, how they socialize, do they have friends, are they popular, are they healthy, do they do a lot of sports, don't they, do they watch a lot, a lot of TV, uh, are you a good parent, are you a nosy parent, are you a helicopter parent, are you a drone parent, what kind of parent you want to be, what kind of parent you are, and then tech, tech and parenting digital media, social media, and parenting. Where do we start? How do we decide? When do we have the silence we need, the moment we need to think, what we have to do to not fail? Because sometimes, how would you feel if even before you start doing something, it feels that you're gonna fail? We need tips and we need resources. We need theory, it's true, but we need support, real support. And we need to know that there's not one single way to do this parenting thing. There's many ways to do it right. Kids will not be traumatized by different styles of parenting if we only try to do it right with common sense and according to our beliefs. Plus, we are so connected nowadays that everyone's watching. I am watching too. And because I watch and I am watched, I know what kind of parenting other people do. And I know what kind of digital parenting other people do. Um, we feel judged, uh, there's prejudice, there's a lot of people giving opinions about what you do, is it good or is, is it not that good or really do you let them use Instagram before they're 13, they shouldn't or no I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that, that would never happen to me what, what, what this boy uh, 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 did in this or this other country that would never happen to me because I won't let them use anything or no, I trust my kid completely because he's so mature I will let him use technology as he cares. Well, we can, this connection that we live in, the same that make, makes possible that everybody, everybody watches us, allows us to stay at home and then reach anywhere in the world and learn from anywhere and anyone in the world. Um, my husband is here with me today. I'm not going to point out to him because he's very discreet. Um, but he was the one when I said I will never read from a Kindle. I will always prefer paper. He, he's the one who gave me a Kindle. And then I, would, I said I will never change my Nokia telephone for a smartphone because I don't need that. He was the one who gave me my first smartphone. He is the one who said have you ever heard of saunas? Maybe we can listen to music at home with that. Or we're going to have a family account at whatever music service so that we can all listen to our own music with our own playlists. And we're going to teach our older kid 
to make his own playlist because he loves music. And that's a healthy, creative, smart use of technology, right? So I'm home and I can reach out to you people. I can get to know people who are at the other side of the ocean. And this connection is good. I'm a tech savvy mom, or that's the word I think you use in English. There's not such a term in Spanish. Uh -huh. uh, but you're not very popular among moms if you're tech savvy or if you're tech positive. Um, but um, I like the connection, and I, someone, I think it was Matt, who said the new normal. This technology world, this wired, hyper-connected world, is the new normal for our kids, and that's okay. We have to be part of our kids' world, but not necessarily of the same level of connection. Just, we have to understand the world they live in and embrace it. Someone else said it too. Um, and we have to stop saying our times were better. Because I played in the streets with my friends. And it was free. It's true. It's true. But, I mean, there are other ways to have fun. And it doesn't mean that your kid is sitting on a sofa watching TV. Or, you know, I, I, I met with my friends and I did not text them constantly expecting them to answer my messages because there was no such thing as a smartphone. So we said, let's meet at five at the mall and my friend didn't show up. So either I waited or left and there was no way to know what happened. So, okay, so what? The new normal is that they can text each other and know if someone's not gonna show up. Let's embrace the times they're living even if we don't want to live those times fully as they are. Our only chance is to understand and accept this world our kids um, receive from us, from people like us who have invented technology, and lead them to use it well. So what we are, parents, is leaders. Embracing this world they live in, they live in and leading them by example, by authority, by limits, by dialogue, by maybe a shared learning process, because it's okay to say what you're talking to me about is something completely unknown. I've never heard of that Snapchat thing. Let's, you know, search about it together if he's older. But we should profit that time in which they look up to us and think we are invincible to last as long as possible and let them know that we are here to talk to them about technology too. So it would be a bit like do with tech as with the rest. Teach them to eat healthy, teach them to be responsible with their homework, to be a good friend, to cross the street but looking before in case someone, some car is coming. In Spain, I uh, work on a concept called e paternidad, that E for electronic maybe, paternidad means, means parenting. I don't use the digital thing because I think it's this, this whole digital parenting is just parenting with a twist, not really a revolutionized parenting. And I do this because as Matt said, there was a time when I realized that action was what was needed someone to do something and help parents realize that they are completely able and completely ready to do this. We are not fools. Someone said in the panel, we know more about life. Yes, and if we want to learn, we will know more about Snapchat in half an hour. If I want to learn to use Snapchat, I will learn in half an hour. Spain is a different country. You have common sense media, you have the Family Alliance Safety Institute, you've got plenty of uh, organizations and companies talking about cyber ethics and being cyber wise and uh, being responsible online. Spain is not there yet. The discourse is the one of fear, still. Let's prevent our kids from being uh, hurt online. Let's prevent our kids from being in danger. This is so unknown, which is okay. At least we're talking about that, but we need to make the change. 
we need to start talking about opportunities, about teaching, about education, and about giving them the chance, giving kids the chance to learn from their parents, from their teachers too, and from society on how to use everything, including technology, well, and to become a citizen who is responsible and smart and ethical and creative and intelligent also online. So I, what I try to do is to give parents specific resources and specific explanations on everything that has to do with kids and technology, trying to translate maybe complicated stuff and make it more um, make it easier to grasp for parents, not only for parents in um, um, comfortable um, environments, but also parents who maybe really don't have the chance to learn about digital. Um, and I try to speak about digital literacy and digital citizenship, because that is not something that is very popular in Spain yet. I know that you guys have Dixit spaces and Dixit classes that doesn't exist in Spain, we're increasingly speaking about how to behave online, but we're still paralyzed in the fear of what not to do online. And since we don't really know what to do online, let's just not do anything online. So we don't talk to kids at all. Uh, we wait till they're teenagers and that's bad. This is what a superhero looks like, the dad. It doesn't matter if he doesn't really do anything as long as he is close to his children. Um, letting them know how to do things right. There is one challenge for you and for us, for parents and educators, which is to raise a Dixit, uh, even if we have different lifestyles. And um, as long as we understand that what we do is strong enough only if we um, want to do it, I think we will be powerful and let our kids know that their parents are superheroes who can help them be good people online and offline. Thank you, Dixit, Sammy, Marielle, and Ryan, and thank you, Twitter, for having me here today. Thank you. Thank you.